You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's American Horror Story After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's American Horror Story After Show. Good evening, After Buzzers. We are here at the After Buzz. Jesus Christ, this loud music. <laughs> We're good. We're going to leave all religious figures out of this. Sorry. <laughs> we are here at the After Buzz TV studios doing things the way things always should be done with Bing. I am your host for the evening, David Skipperlitty. I am back from the dead. Um, joined by these three gorgeous ladies. Hi, I'm Anna Koppel. I am Jillian Love. And I'm Oriana Leo. And we are here doing American Horror Story Season 3, Episode 2, titled Boy Pots. So many boy parts. <laughs> so many boy parts. And you're listening to Rhiannon by Fleetwood Mac. Who apparently... The original witchy original woman. Witch. I can't. I love that freaking woman. Stevie Nicks is my goddess. Just gonna throw that out there. I'm glad. I'm glad you. Are you guys not in accordance? You guys are. So really quickly before we start talking about the episode, <laughs> uh, I just want to sort of acknowledge some of our viewer comments on YouTube and iTunes. And by the way, we always love your feedback. We do. Uh, mostly when it's nice. <laughs> I like the bad comments. I'm not. I'm gonna put that out there for my fellow hosts. It, it, it makes us better. Yeah. It, it does. really does. And I definitely took uh, the comments to heart. I I think that we all take everything here at AfterBuzz seriously. We are, we're not just hosts. I think we're commentators. And you know, last week for me in particular was embarrassing. You know, I didn't know. <laughs> Oriana is like so. She's like giving me like sad face. No, I don't <laughs> think it should be embarrassing. Well, what was embarrassing about last week? Well, I just didn't know like any of the historical references and whatever. So okay. I, I've done a lot of research this week. Good. I'm Perfect. going to continue to do research. Exciting. And you know, and and. We can't know everything, and so that's why we rely on you, the fans. Yes. Exactly. And to, yeah. This week, well, last week was a, an expository episode. There's a lot of information, and we are so happy to sort of dig into the meat and potatoes of it this week. Yes. Um, and I think we have a better understanding, and we appreciate all of your comments. And we have a guy on the panel. Yay! Yay! Yay. Not just any guy. Not just any guy. The guy with the best hair <laughs> ever. And, and tan. Uh, and tan. tan. Boom. <laughs> natural tan. You heard it here first. Totally natural tan. I was born this color. <laughs> Obvi. The best part about Clearly. getting the pilot episode out of the way, essentially, is that because it was such an exposition episode, is that it unpacked everything and everybody, hopefully. We don't have to do too much unpacking. So now that the suitcase is unpacked, we can kind of make sense of what we've got. And so we can kind of dig into storylines instead of having to try to understand who is, who is? Every single thing, they just threw the spaghetti at the wall and we saw what stuck. Yeah. Right. Is it Laveau or is it LaLaurie? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's both. Well, we, as we know with Ryan Murphy, mm -hmm. this, suitpack, this suitcase is not unpacked completely. The suitcase is open. We've taken out a few shirts. It is Ryan Murphy. <laughs> this is American Horror Story. There is a lot to be uncovered still. Sure. Um, but that being said, I think... Yes, the pilot episode gave you a lot, and there was a lot to digest, and there was a lot to go over, and there was a lot of new characters, a lot of new faces and names and things like that that we all have to and old get faces. used to. Yes. And old faces, old beautiful faces. <laughs> oh, just go anyway. Anyway. So here we are. So here we are too. Episode two. Boy parts. Here we are. Boy parts in the morgue. Well, I want to start talking with um, our. Headmistress Cordelia mm. and her husband Hank. Only because I, at this point her storyline is the smallest. Right. It is sort of our B storyline of the moment. C even. C even, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Um, and 
it, not that it isn't interesting, it's just sort of, I find Sarah Paulson's character at this point, I seem to have a problem with Sarah Paulson, because I also had a problem with her last season, not that I don't love her, but I feel like she sort of gets these characters that aren't as interesting as everybody else. Mm. Um, she's having, I guess, marital problems? For not really no, fertility, fertility problems. problems. Yeah. But this seems to be past tense, right? So I'm guessing it's past tense. I don't think she's the headmistress of the school because she has a husband and she's trying to make a baby. <laughs> I'm thinking she's the headmistress because that did not work out. Oh, so you're thinking this is happening in I'm thinking the this past. is a flashback and that this is what she was, she was in this situation, she tried, mm -hmm. and as we saw in that wild sex scene oh with God. the magic yeah, circle scene. fire snakes and her <laughs> eyes going black for that moment while yeah. she's making love to her husband um, yeah. something went wrong oh. and maybe that is why she is now this headmistress lonely and uh, doesn't want to talk about her witchy powers and wants I, to encourage the girls to sort of shy away. What, how, yeah, what's your take? Yeah, I really, I like that take. I just don't know that I, Ryan Murphy's been so good about saying, this was in 2012, this was in 1864, so you know, we get the screen of, of timeline, but uh, not an impossibility, and I do, I do like that theory. It's sort of open ended now mm -hmm. because right. because the way that it ended was we saw her in the the sex circle. Mm -hmm. um, and Snake. I mean, sex the circle. only way to have sex is in a circle. Of fire. Of fire. Of fire. Of fire. <laughs> exactly. So so the storyline's open ended, and she really stressed to her husband that she didn't want to be involved in any sort of magic to help this fertility, and that's why she was doing the treatments. So I sort of want to know what flipped. Something had to happen, some desperation had to happen that made her, you know, sort of use magic because she didn't want to do that. Well, let me ask you this, okay? As a woman, or all, as all you ladies, if you were having problems with fertility and you were given the option of IVF, which is a very long, painful, hormonal process, which can sometimes lead to nothing, mm -hmm. or... Or just magically create magic one with a snake fire. baby. <laughs> What would you do? Well, we kind of talked about this last week where... I'm magic snake baby all the way. <laughs> yeah, me too. Where, you know, there are people who are... Uh, she's the daughter of the Supreme, and Fiona last week was kind of saying, you know, you're the daughter of the Supreme, and she's like, no, I'm just like everybody else. And I hate that. I hate when people are like, yeah, you know, I might be an heiress, but I'm just like you. Like, no, you're not. Right. So use your effing powers and make a snake baby. She's right. fighting it though. Well, my yeah. feeling, Duh. I mean, I don't think, I don't know. If I could make a snake baby, I probably would. Um, come on. Come on. Let's, it's just be, much let's be real here. Yeah. But um, way more sexy. It just mm. seems like, you know, her, what she hates about her mother is that she's got this sort of evil power. Like she's, right. she's kind of cruel and she's cruel to her daughter. And Cordelia hates that about her own mother. Like, when are you going to die already? is what she said to her last episode. Mm -hmm. right. So I just feel like there's this tension there and she doesn't want to be like her mother who would use anything to be young, would use anything, do anything. So she's yeah. trying to take the right path, but ultimately, I mean, I guess she tried to do it for her husband? I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what changed. She's she's fighting it. I can tell she's fighting it. I don't know, fans, what do you think? Do you think it's a flashback? Do you think it's happening in real time? Comment below. We'd love to know your thoughts because I think we're sort of split. I don't know. I mean, I just feel like something had to happen, and this might have been the bad thing that made her the way she is now, that she's teaching the witches to sort of hone their powers and, and hold them in and subdue them when Fiona is the one that's like, you need to use this because look at what happened when, when the cops came in. You know, Fiona uh, spit in the glass and, and was doing mind control and Cordelia was freaking out. Stop doing that, stop doing that. You know, I don't I don't think she wants to be involved with it at all. See, the way that I see it is, is that this definitely happened in the present tense. It's definitely happening now to her and her husband. And the way that she looks at her magic is that she sees her mother and how her power, I mean, it's like an age-old story when it comes to 
witches and how magic is seducing and it's something that I saw in the secret circle when I was doing that show and we see it in the craft and how mm -hmm. I mean practical magic all these like other witch tales that we've all known and loved is that magic seduces you and it sort of takes over your life and then it sort of becomes something that you necessarily can't control so I feel like that's the way that she sees it and she's seen her mother and she's never grown to her full potential because she wants to avoid becoming her mother. Ooh, and that leads me to something that her mother does say at the end that I think is kind of a theme is mm -hmm. maybe it's better not to disappoint the ones you love. Exactly. I might say something from the booth. Don't oh, yes, don't Steven. Mind. Hey. Um, <laughs> I really see a comparison here in people who are people who are famous, like children of famous people. Mm -hmm. They really sometimes try to change their name. Like take Nicolas Cage for an example. They actually reference Nicolas Cage in the first episode. They do, and he's a Coppola. Yeah, he's a Coppola. He tried to become someone without using the Coppola name. And if you look at her daughter... You look at Natalie Portman. <laughs> well, if you look at her daughter in the show, she's she's very... She's book witchy. Mm -hmm. She's not the whole, like, powerful spells, because that's right. what her mom is. She's the one who went into alchemy and things like that. So that kind of seems like that was something to do against her mom, because she didn't want to, like, give into the big power. She wanted to be the book smart one. And then with this... Uh, with the pregnancy thing, I think it's really just her mom's back... And I think there's there's a stress to not, you know, doing procreating the old fashioned way. And I think she's with, just with, uh, with IVF. <laughs> yeah. The old fashioned way is clearly not working. Yeah, so that's why she's doing the whole the old magic fashion way. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's, that. I, I don't know that I agree with that. It's not like she went to law school. I mean, she's still dabbling in witchcraft, <laughs> right? Like, she's, Exactly. She's, she didn't yeah. go to law school. She's teaching other witches to control themselves. Right. Yeah. And and she is making potions and speaking Latin. and. But it looks like the magic she's using isn't using her powers at all. It's all incantations. It's right. all things like that. So right. she's defying her mom by only using incantation magic as opposed to the powers that were bestowed upon her by being the Supreme's daughter. Right. Mm -hmm. But just because she's the Supreme's daughter doesn't mean she has actualized that same type of power. Right. Because right. in the beginning, I believe... Even in the first episode, in the pilot episode, they say that it usually skips a generation and doesn't go to every single but you daughter. Know what? Um, they, she had said in the first episode, um, you know, you you could have been the the next supreme. Right. So I think that it's something that they have the, it builds up. Right, and it's very possible that uh, what the hell's her name, Claudia. <laughs> Is that her mm -hmm. name? Who? Cordelia. Cordelia. <laughs> we can just call her Foxy from now on, because that's what so M.M., I, what, Ma that's Madison true. Montgomery, I just call her Foxy. M.M. Wait, M.M. calls her Foxy, <laughs> which I like a lot better. I do, too. We so can't Foxy. have nicknames for every character. Our audience yes. can have no idea we what can. we're The audience yeah. can vote on that. We did it on Pretty Little Liars, and they still refer to them as those same nicknames today. All right. <laughs> Three seasons later. Anyway, <laughs> so Foxy could have been conceived, because there has been no mention of a husband Right. So she could have been conceived the same exact way, which is why she can't conceive because she's mm. not a natural birth. Oh. Oh, wow. So there's a lot of things going on. Lot. What is that face? <laughs> uh oh. Spit it out. It just assumes that, I don't know, just because you were born through in vitro means that you're not going to be able to conceive naturally. Exactly. No, no that's, I don't, I don't <laughs> think that's born, If you were born, no, if you were like, born by, through a snake baby process, then yeah, maybe you can't come. We don't know yeah. how a witch's ovaries work. Is it a deal with the devil? Her eyes turned black. Yeah, oh, I mean, it really be. looks like Because remember, it. she said that she didn't want a toy with life and death. Right. And that's the thing that freaks me out, because we didn't catch the black right away. Stephen did. Stephen. Yeah. Right. Stephen has the eyes. Um, he caught it's it. Black eyes. I know. Yeah. It's like, super creepy. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, I, the it devil. was like the devil passed through her. Right. Yeah. And is it possible that she traded the life of a baby for her husband's life? Do you think the snakes? Oh, no, that's exactly what I thought because I'm yeah. I'm feeling like Hank Hank is the name of her husband. I'm feeling like he's not really a, a part of this story. Yeah, because we're he's just an auxiliary character. Yeah, the maybe first, men in general. I feel like in this storyline are not are going to be coming and going. I don't think they're going to be very important. Yeah. The first thing I said when I saw him was, "Oh, he he's not long for this show." Right. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> I had an epiphany though because you said it skips a generation. Mm -hmm. What if because her mother's back, the Supreme, she's now desperate to have another child 
because it did skip her. To replace her. Because it did skip her, and now she needs someone to be able to be on the same footing as her mother. Brilliant. Even though it's long-term planning, you never know. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I mean, I guess we'll see. It's very, very interesting. But on that note... On that note, I just wanted to talk about the opening. About the gators and the white winged dove playing and and then Misty Day appearing and making these alligators. I mean, it was a gruesome scene. And loved it. again, another character that I'm like, is she, we know that she's alive now, yes. right? She healed herself. Well, was herself. there any question <laughs> that she was actually dead with you? Well, you know that, Lu- that Louisiana <laughs> mud just healed her right up. Just healed her right exactly. up. Exactly. Well, there was never a question that she was going to be, uh, that we were going to see her again, but uh-huh. there was kind of a question of how she comes back to life, I right. guess. But yeah. I mean, you always have to think about who your actors are. Right, right. And who's portraying these characters. They're never going to bring on, which is why in the pilot episode, I knew immediately that Kathy Bates was not actually dead. Of course. Of course, because yeah. it's Kathy Bates. Like, you don't put her in the pilot episode for <laughs> two minutes, pay her a million dollars, and then kill her. <laughs> what the hell was the point of that? Well, um, um, her interaction with what? Tate's character. I mean, I keep calling him Tate from last season. I know. Kyle. Frank and Kyle? That, that's but Kyle, season one. Yeah, but Kyle, Frank and Kyle. He's, Frank the one, and he's the one who's dead now, and she's the one of resurgence. So connecting those two characters together is a really good plot point. Well, he's undead. Or we is don't he even undead? Know what is he a zombie? We're I mean, really there are sure. so many things that are going to come to play with him. But with also, like, you know, we keep seeing these themes about you know, um, protecting those that are taken advantage of or that mm-hmm. are underrepresented. You know, we've seen the slaves. Um, and then even Misty Day coming out of nowhere and being like, you know, you're preying on these helpless animals. And what for? They're just going to be shoes, you know? But then to turn them against their captors and their killers, it seems so dramatic. But it's also a theme, I feel like, that plays out through all of the American Horror Story. Yeah. And Ryan Murphy project, something Steve and I were discussing earlier. Yeah. You know, there's always some somebody on a mission to save somebody, somebody else. Yeah. yeah. I agree. But That's I'm wondering, is, is this going to translate into Frank and Kyle? Like, is she going to be saving Frank and Kyle? Or <laughs> just animals? Well, I mean, I guess that is something that we're going to have to see. I don't necessarily think that Misty Day is going to be around for the long haul. Not to say that she's going to be killed off again. But I don't see that character being around for very much longer. It's, it was a bizarre, to me, a bizarre kind of turn in her character mm-hmm. this evening because I saw her uh, in the pilot and tonight as well as such like a strong woman, witch with this like incredible power. But then she seemed like so fragile and desperate with Zoe, just like, you're, you're not gonna leave, right? You're gonna come back, right? And that she's a, belonging. And all, yeah, that she would have only just found another witch. Mm-hmm. She's been alone for so long. Well, I understand, but how long has she been alone? Yeah, yeah. I guess she's been like kind of a weirdo in the woods now. Well, we also don't know how old she is. If she can bring things back from the dead. But also, has she died more than once? That's what I'm saying. Right. Where did? Where? When was she born? Exactly. Why is she such a weirdo? Why does she live in the woods? <laughs> There's a so lot of questions. questions. That need why to be is she answered. obsessed with Stevie Nicks? Wait, we know why. <laughs> we know why. She's because amazing. She's the you only get me. other witch you she's get ever me. known. The I get white, you. The original white witch. I can't stand it. <laughs> yes, oh, bring it in. It Thank you. Mm. I saw them perform. I feel like I need like bell sleeves. Live at the Staples Center. It was amazing. Bell sleeves. I bet it was. <laughs> oh my god, I died. Anyway, um, and then Misty Day brought me back to life. That's our connection. Um, <laughs> speaking of Misty, Misty makes an appearance again. She's back, she's alive, and I think her purpose was to bring back Kyle at this point, from what we know. And I thought what brought Kyle back to life was was love, the kiss. true love's kiss. I, <laughs> I hope love. not. They knew each other for, for five, five sec- minutes. Yeah, Getting I a break. really hope not. I we were ta- so Jillian and I were talking about this last week. Was like, okay, if this gets set up that they're going to be boyfriend and girlfriend again, it's just it's a little bit for me at least. It's a little bit too predictable. It's a little bit too cheesy. It I was is. kind of gagging, yeah. like, oh, baloney, like really. Uh, not that I was 
actually paying attention during the credits, sometimes we fast forward through them. Is he in the opening credits or is he guest starring? He's in, uh, he's, yeah, he's in, in the credits. opening credits. Okay, so he's gonna be in the show for Listen, the rest of the he, season. He's around, they're filming yeah. in Louisiana right now and um, you know, he's he's gonna be there. Yeah, he'll be it's, there for the rest of the season. The way, I brought this up in News and Gossip last week, mm -hmm. um, Tysa Farmiga did say on the red carpet that there is something going on between her and Evan Peters this season as well. She just wouldn't delve into it too deep. Um, and, and clearly Kyle has emotions for Zoe because even though he's a Frank and Kyle, Towards the end, when they were in Misty Day's sort of den, mm -hmm. um, you know, he he didn't want her to leave. He was moaning and and he kept pulling on to her. So there's a connection there. There is a connection, but is the connection um, more of like when we actually see Frankenstein's monster mm -hmm. in that story of Doctor Frankenstein? Um, that monster had a connection to Dr. Frankenstein as well. So is there a connection because she brought Good him point. back to life and not necessarily because he's in love with her. So he feels that connection because he feels like this is my creator. Right. This is my quote unquote God. But also I'm confused. So Zoe is the Black Widow. She kills people by having sex with them. But does she, she bring people back to life by kissing them? I mean... <laughs> You, that would be awesome. But but do you understand? Because like Misty Day just said she came because she felt the power. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So my Well, this is where I know it gets really tricky because I'm thinking maybe the power is her her innate supreme powers that right. she doesn't know she has because she's a weak pathetic weakling. Exactly. And that's where like I feel like this is sort of going. They've sort of set it up for us as the fans to try and figure out. They do set it up in the beginning with um, Fiona and Claudia. You could have been the next supreme. There's a lot of things happening to the left of me. I'm sorry. <laughs> very distracted. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um and now I lost my train of thought. This is why I hate you. I, but I love you. <laughs> uh, Zoe's I don't know the next what I was supreme saying. Zoe's mark? the next supreme. Is it what no, you think? it's definitely not a question mark. It's happening. Okay. I'm is, gonna say that she, right is now. Is she Foxy's daughter? Do you want to save it for no. predictions? No. Okay. No, I'm just okay. gonna spit it out now because if I save for predictions, I'll forget it. Okay. <laughs> so are we officially on to we are talking boy, boy about parts? Boy parts, where we get our title. For this week's episode, Zoe and Madison, the ever likable Emma Roberts. You know, there was a moment there the before sarcasm. they go into the morgue um, that I thought I, I made a star in my notes, meaning oh. major theme. Oh, is that and what you do? Yes, that's what I do. And it says uh, that's fun. guilt by association. With the frat with boys. With Madison? With Kyle. Mm. Frank and Kyle. But well, Madison he, is guilty? Madison is saying that Kyle is a bad guy. Oh, yes. Because he was fraternity brothers with with these guys that gang raped mm -hmm, her, and mm -hmm. oh, he would have done it if he had gotten the chance. Right. And to me, that kind of brought up this idea of guilt by association. Like, are all slave owners bad people? Are all these frat yeah. guys bad people? Like, everyone that is persecuting someone else mm -hmm. Are you know they get lumped in with everyone else you know with the person that's doing the persecuting? Interesting. Well, I guess we'll get to see because she's now given him the opportunity totally to rape her. Oh my God! Or has she? I mean, she picked his all the his parts. She did. Yeah. She totally part. picked all his parts. Yeah. yeah. But has she given him the opportunity to rape her? Has he actually given? Not has yet. she given him? New life? Is he a new person now that he's different parts? parts. I have so many questions about that scene. Uh, you know, Zoe Start said. Start asking them. Zoe said, "Did we marry the devil?" I mean, was the yeah, devil was a involved cheesy. in that? Yeah. I'm sure the devil was involved. I mean, with stuff with bringing back people to life, you always see it. We see it in Practical Magic. I'll say it again. When did you bring you someone back from the dead, Sabrina, the teenage cracker. Yes. How I great was did that line? Love that show. <laughs> Um, no, they they said um, in in the incantation we will devote ourselves to you for all eternity and right. until we you know yeah. go blah blah blah. Okay. We see go. it all the time when someone is being brought back from the dead. They never one come back as the same person as they were from right. before. Right. Two, it's always dark magic. It's never light magic. So, 
And the devil being involved. I don't know. Well, the know. girls were screaming. You know. yeah, like they were in pain almost. Like there was this like. Which fun... made no sense. Well, it yeah. seemed like there's an electrical too. storm of some kind of like spirit. I don't know. And the there, camera got heads. fuzzy. And that was Ryan Murphy's magic. Yeah. Yes. That was a magic <laughs> touch right there. <laughs> he was like, I want lightning. Make lightning happen. Exactly. Yeah. But I also Let's think. take the camera out of focus. <laughs> Great. Fog. Flip Thank it upside you. down. Awesome. Yes. I could have I could have done without the fog. I, yeah. yeah. But uh, I think, yeah, if you're going to do something as heavy as bring somebody back from the dead, uh, you should probably not steal the spell from somebody else. Like, you should well, know yes. what you're doing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. You should know um, what the Latin means. Yeah. I did enjoy the fact, though, that when Emma Roberts was saying the spell, Madison. Yes. Whatever her freaking name is. Madison Montgomery. Thank M -M. you. And then um, Mandy Moore. Uh, <laughs> yes. Sorry. God, I loved her. And she you was said hot. MM, I thought Mandy Moore. Um, when <laughs> Madison, I have a very polluted thought process in my brain hole. I'm going to put that out there. Um, it's probably because you have a brain hole. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing in there. When Madison. Madison was saying the spell and she was speaking whatever language Latin. she's speaking. Mm -hmm. Sure, Latin. Um, it didn't sound like she'd ever spoken it before. That is one thing that I truly enjoyed because whenever you see a witch show and they start like incanting spells and stuff like that they always sound like they've been speaking latin their entire life and right. you're like where did you learn latin you're 10 years old like and she even right. said i have been acting since i was five years I old know i lines. know my lines I mean, sure. she doesn't know and what it means you right. know, you might not know what they mean you might not how, know how to exactly say it them. and like i enjoyed that I, a little bit of truth to a witch story and I know this is a little off topic, but it also made me nervous when Foxy mm -hmm. was having her husband say the words. Because I thought, oh my god, this is an opportunity for him to mess up. He doesn't yeah. know what he's saying. And this is a foreign language spell. It's and a foreign she's, language to everybody. And he's, <laughs> she's saying, say it. Like, what if he says something wrong? And so there seems like there's just so many opportunities for everything to go awry. And of course, they do. Of course they, do. they do. Or did they? We'll see. We don't we really know. See. We're gonna have to wait and see, like what happens. We're gonna have to tune in next week. But what a great friend uh, Madison is. I mean, <laughs> is she? She's like, you're on your own, oh bitch. My God. What a friend. Please. You know? I mean, Zoe raped her rapist to death last week. Like, <laughs> I, I, I owe you, girl. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she's like, I'm gonna get you back by getting your boyfriend back, and then as soon as somebody comes, she takes off. I mean, this girl hey. is. Every man for himself. Yeah. yeah, she could have done something. <laughs> she could have flipped that guy's car. Totally. Oh. She could have done anything. She could have done yeah. anything. She could have been like, "Hi, I'm Madison Montgomery. Do you want my autograph?" Got into a little conversation. No. She could have done somebody's many thinking. Things. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. That's she you. She one introduced herself <laughs> as, "Hi, I'm Madison Montgomery, the movie star." Right. Yes. So, right there off the bat, tells you that she's completely self-obsessed. Right. Well, we right. were here. We she did mention that she's trying to get herself together, clean herself up, sober, no, she sober said, except for vodka. Exactly. No, but she later said, when they when she said we're going to take us to jail, and she's like, I can't. I'm supposed to be cleaning myself up and getting myself supposed together. Supposed to be. And right. Her representation staged an intervention. Right. And we all know how those go. Mm -hmm. That's like the fifth time they go exactly. to rehab. Exactly. Come on. We wonder why it doesn't break. work. You get forced to go. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing. And, and then you write your song about it, but then that doesn't always work out. Yeah. Speaking of Madison's backstory, um, I want to just touch on Queenie real fast because I'm obsessed with Gabri Sidibe. Can we just talk about her oh, backstory yeah. in, in, cool. in the um, the fried chicken fast food restaurant? We can. But before <laughs> we talk about fried chicken, mm -hmm. go ahead. Which I do love me some fried yeah. chicken. Um, I want to. Have our fans do us all a favor here at AfterBuzz and on our show, and comment, rate, subscribe, mm -hmm. tell us how much you like fried chicken, give us some fried chicken recipes, mm -hmm. <laughs> where to get good fried chicken, um, where to order fried chicken. Give us five stars. <laughs> I don't know what any of that means, because I don't know how to use iTunes. <laughs> but I'm sure that you people out there do. I am not very technologically advanced. He everybody. can't even say technologically. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I am like, 
But everyone at home, we know you are. We know that you are because you're listening to us or you're watching us right now. So you know how to use iTunes. You also, I'm sure, know how to use Amazon. So you can go on there. You can order Serial Buddies. It is out on DVD now. Mm -hmm. Um, You can also go to 7-Eleven because I heard it's on sale there. They're selling um, it everywhere. They're and selling it literally everywhere. Everybody wants and it. And for those of you who don't know, Serial Buddies is a movie that our executive producers, Kevin Undegaro <laughs> and extras Maria Menounos, put out into the world, and it's awesome. It stars Maria, Beth Bears. Mm-hmm. It's like Dexter meets Dumb and Dumber, and we love it. We've all seen it, and you're here so to support us. So support us by buying the movie. Yeah, yeah or so. I, you can rent it you can on rent. Netflix, right? You, can. you, can, you, can, you, can, you yeah. have to order it. It's not... Streaming, so it has to be sent to your house. It's not streaming yet. Which is kind of a pain in the ass, but not really, but All right. whatever. And then, uh, you can get <laughs> it is kind of a pain in the ass. You have to stick it on your queue, and you got to wait for it to show up. So but you can go right away to 7-Eleven or Target. Yeah, so yeah. go right. to go to 7-Eleven is what we're saying. There's one on every corner. <laughs> okay, can we talk about fried chicken now? Yes, please. Oh, thank I'm getting you. hungry. Um, Back to fried chicken. <laughs> Back to Queenie. Uh, loved, 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 loved that she stuck her hand in the fryer. So good. So graphic, like so unnecessary to see skin bubble yeah. on the screen. Like I never thought I'd actually. Really? I mean, I, I was thought like, it was uh, fully necessary. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I, I mean, I come on. It, yeah. It's so good. It the is special so good. effects were fantastic. Yeah, it was. It was good. <laughs> I watched it like this. I was so scared. No. Yeah. So good. <laughs> I mean, of course, it's like cringeworthy, but right. that's what the show is about. Yeah. You want to be horrified, right? It's a yeah. horror story. It's a horror story. The one thing that I do not like about. Queenie's backstory is that she's a descendant of Tituba. I love it. Okay, I think it's fantastic. Great. Make her, I'm going to hold your hand, make her a (laughs) descendant of the freaking queen of all magic. But come on, does it have to be a character from The Crucible? (laughs) (laughs) It is. She is. If you read The Crucible or you watch the freaking play, Tituba is in that and Tituba dies in that. But she's a real, she's a real person also. Uh, so was, am I. It was a, <laughs> she was a slave in the in Salem, uh, and as was I. Uh, okay, well, you'll have to tell us your backstory. Explains your color. I am. Yeah. I was a slave in Salem. But what Continue. I what I like about about this is that Tichuba, um was known for necromancy, and right. as we know, Misty Day is as well. So I'm wondering if at some point their storylines will cross. Now and, here's where I think you're completely insane. Okay, go. <laughs> okay. Tituba, as we know, was a slave, right? Right. Slaves, as we know, were black. Right. Misty Day is white. Okay, but <laughs> she was like, really, really white. white. Okay, but she was a slave in Salem, and there were also white witches in Salem. No, I know, but and I'm what? Not saying what? That they're sisters. I'm <laughs> <laughs> sisters. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? I'm saying maybe they're sister from another mist. Okay. okay. I mean, well, sure. I mean, the possibility is out there. But the way I think that they explained it is Angela Bassett's character. Marie Laveau. Yes. Is that her yes. name? Yes. Yes. Madame Marie Laveau. An actual historical character sure. as well. Yeah. She explained I that. She <laughs> yeah, awesome. Queen of voodoo. I'm, ta- I'm thinking, you know, Stella. Yeah, her group was back. Did you see that oh weave? My oh yeah. my gosh. She, she was is swinging them right. 1990s Angela Bassett <laughs> never looked better. Come on, woman. Clearly, she's been drinking the serum. She has been. Yeah. I don't know what she's doing, but she looks amazing. Give me anyway, some. so how she explains it is that Tituba came from this African tribe and learned her voodoo magic from the Akawa. Is that what she said? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or the Macaw. What did she say? No, it, the was, Akawa. it was the Akawa. I think a Macaw's I was a right. bird. She learned from the Macaw <laughs> in Africa. <laughs> This yes. macaw came up to her and was like, yo, this is voodoo. Like, and she was like, awesome. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take it to the Americas. Um, and she gave magic to the girls of Salem. So I think that's how Missy Day got her fascination with dead peoples. Well, as you recall, all magic derived from Tituba is, necromant- Tituba is necromancy. But so, I feel yeah. like I missed that then. No, because she was dabbling in necromancy, and then everything is derived from that. So all of the witches of the Supreme and everything, they all learn from the same base person, which is Tituba. Yeah. Right. So that connects literally everything. It connects, um, it connects Kyle 
with, I mean, the same way that you see her, you see her boyfriend, like Che or whatever his name was, the bull, the Minotaur guy. Che? Uh, his na- um, <laughs> I forgot. He's a Minotaur, but his name what is um, Che Guevara. Bastien. Oh, Bastien. Bastien. Well, the same way you see him, he's alive. Yeah. I really feel like when she finds him in the attic, he's not alive. And she brought him back with the same kind of spell that the girls used to, used oh. to bring Kyle back. And that's why he's not talking at the end. That's why he's like, Ugh. That's why he's still a guitar. Uh. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like you don't get a personality from the person you bring back. But it, all of the magic mm. connects to itself through Tituba. So I'm wondering how Queenie's going to fit into this mm. in a big way. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, because Queenie's power is she's a human voodoo doll. Right. right. Yeah, yes. Yes. human voodoo doll. Mm-hmm. I was but like, but that doesn't tech- seem right, but yes. yeah. But now a question that we had last week I think has been answered, and that's, uh, you know, can she be hurt if somebody else is hurting her? And uh, Madame LaLaurie... Smacks her over the head. Yeah, and she falls Which down. I'm surprised that she fell down and not Kathy Bates. But I guess, like... But she has she to be wasn't... focusing her power right. on yeah. ch- uh, her subject of choice. Right. And she was hit in the back of the head. Yeah. Mm. Poor Queenie. She'll be poor fine. About Queenie. Nothing. But so we know she can be hurt by other people. But then I was also wondering if she wanted to kill someone, could she give herself a mortal wound that would not mortally wound her, but would kill the other person? Which I'm guessing is yes. But I. Oh, interesting. Do you know what I mean? Could she stab herself? In but the- can you? I don't think with a voodoo doll you can kill somebody. Oh, you can only torture them. I think you can torture and hurt them. Right. I don't think you can kill somebody that way. My question is, if Tituba had all these powers and could give them to other people, maybe Queenie has the ability to give other people her powers. So if we get Misty Day with the power of resurgence, Mm -hmm. the ability of voodoo, and she can kill herself over and over again, I don't know. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it's something that we'll have to wait and see. I mean, someone who clearly has not died is Angela Bassett. Yes. Right. What's her name Marie Laveau. Ma- Laveau. Marie Laveau. I, it's hard with all these French names. Yes. Yeah. Let's just put it out there. French names are not hard. Voodoo Queen. Easy to remember. Yeah. Fierce Voodoo Queen. And then we have Sorry. Madame <laughs> Lalaurie. Madame Delphine And then we La- have Delphine Madame Marie Delphine de Lalaurie. Very good. Mm-hmm. Very good. I had to write it down. <laughs> um... <laughs> So I'm not going to remember her name. She's going to be Kathy Bates from here on out. Um, and Fiona. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Which I think was very interesting that her name, her last name is Good. Um, just going to put that out there. Well, is she the good witch? No, no, no. Uh, it's like a Salem witch thing. Is with it? Their la- one of their, the Salem family, oh, yeah, one of their last good. names Something was good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. good call, I had no idea. Yeah, so she's definitely like a descendant. I mean, I'm sure they all are of the Salem witches, but I think she's a direct line, which is why she is a, a supreme. supreme. Um, but Fiona is looking to become more youthful, as we know from mm-hmm. the first she's episode. She's desperate. Desperate. Um, I mean, as we all are, chasing youth. Hello, well, we live in L.A. I know. Yeah. But what would you do for it is the question. And well, what she actually, do? Um, Fiona would <laughs> burn some weaves. We saw that. Uh-huh. We saw that. And that's expensive. Human hair is expensive, and they buy it by the pound. Mm-hmm. And I didn't say that. This show is completely racist without me having to be. Yeah, we were, we were commenting <laughs> that it just it comes off as, I mean, the stereotypes are just kind of. Yeah. Stereotypes exist for a reason. I'm going to say it. It's okay to be, everyone's a little bit racist, but one even of the, if we don't want to admit it. One of the lines, though, was, clean up your stations, I'm tired of seeing Popeyes and Coke cans. Every, I mean, come on. I didn't say it. I know you didn't she say it. She said it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Me? But I think it's great you said it. Um, <laughs> I think it's great that, they, you know what I mean? Okay, come on. They're going to have a, a salon run by a black lady in New Orleans. We need two fried chicken references right. in one episode. I mean, granted, yes. ha- I mean, if <laughs> you go to three. New Orleans, everything's fried. We, okay. Yes, everything is Every fried in New Orleans. Every single thing is fried yeah. or caked in sugar. Yeah. However, I, did, I just seemed so over the top to me. Like, I, it was, I was very a little over the top. She like, turns on the music just, and they're like dancing, yeah, get, doing the hair. And they're they're like, yeah, girl. yeah, girl, get it, girl, get it, girl. You're just like, really? Like, Come yes. on. Like, I'm, yeah. He was just on. pushing the stereotype a little too Or is it a real thing? I mean, when was the last time we were in a salon like that? 
No, never. Exactly. So no. maybe we shouldn't even. Maybe we should do some research. Maybe we should. Go to Compton. <laughs> Um, you guys, we're I'm coming gonna, for you, Compton. I'm gonna post a related you. YouTube video <laughs> after this, you guys. So look out for it. What is this YouTube video? As I'm gonna post a related one, so you're gonna have to look out for it too. I don't know how to use. The Surprises computer. for the fans. I know. Surprise, job, Anna. <laughs> I told you I don't know how to use the computer, so you're just gonna have to tell me later. I will. I'll just show it to you. Um, perfect. But Fiona is looking for some magic cure to everlasting life. She finds out that. Kathy Bates is totally still alive. She's mm -hmm. immortal. Right. Which um, w is a similar theme. It's not something that we haven't seen before, someone being cursed with immortality mm -hmm. to punish them for their wrongdoings. I mean, it was a theme last season on Vampire Diaries, um, as it is a theme this season. It has been a theme in Vampire Lore forever that the original vampire was cursed with this right. for wronging somebody. Right. So I wonder, and I'm seeing, wondering what you people think, because she hasn't said that she's hungry, she said that she hasn't been hungry as of yet, if she might be vampire. Well, she is, she's a day walker, because she's just sitting well, out and plain as day. Yeah. She has some kind of odor that we don't, Really, yeah, if understand. you hadn't bathed in 180 years or worn deodorant and the same clothes, I'm sure you would I guess, think but this too. is also someone who we guess hasn't gone to the bathroom because they haven't eaten and they're immortal. I mean, there's all these things that come yeah. together where you're like, well, she foul, smells foul, but then also we don't see Fiona reacting to her smell. And why doesn't she bathe her? Well, but then, um, but <laughs> take a bath. You stupid. Oh, you know, but Fiona Madame... ate fried chicken too. So we, I think we have, we're split even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On she the brought fried, fried chicken. chicken. There were three references. Okay, so uh, she's like, Madame... my daughter knows how to fry, fry up a some chicken. chicken. If I may, yes, <laughs> spit it out. Uh, Madame Laveau said to Fiona in the salon, uh -huh. uh, "You're a witch. I can smell it on you." So. I think that might be interesting. But then Madame Lalaurie is asking, "Are you a witch?" I was hoping you were, so you could kill me. I don't. Believe, I don't think. Correct me if I'm wrong. That she was a witch herself. Oh no, she's not. She's no, not. She's right. She was not. just completely insane and like tortured people to. Loved Greek mythology. Just you know, yeah. plain old weird. Plain my, old weird. I know she was a my, serial killer. Yeah. Sick, sick lady. My yeah. point is this: is that yeah. witches seem to have this sense of smell about who somebody is. Right. Or do the voodoo ladies have the sense of smell? Well, they all seem to. No, all the all the girls seem to have a sense of smell about uh, Knowing who La each La other Lurie. are. Oh, about LaLaurie, yeah, yeah, that she stinks. Right, and, and it's probably because she's such a horrible person. Oh. Oh, oh that's brilliant. Look at that. Oh, look at that. I look at you. I just that's thought brilliant. it was because she was, you know, like laying in her like own 180 poop that's for what I thought. a while. I just assumed that she's like Or it's like a death. stink of forbidden magic. It's the stink oh, of forbidden oh, magic, or it's the stink of her rotten soul, or whatever it is, but that's a great point. Like a, yeah. a rotting soul. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, we know but she's the new maid next week, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, ah, we'll, we'll see if Kathy Bates still stinks. You know. Um, does Kathy Bates, Kathy Bates? Uh, 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 that was, yeah. I'm gonna call it here, a dumb pun. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the dumbest ever heard. Dumb he can't even fight back, he's in the booth. <laughs> I know, he can fight back. <laughs> um, but, where was I going with this? Oh, Fiona mm -hmm. says to Kathy Bates, his character. Lollery. <sighs> Madame Lollery. Isn't it Delory? La Lori. La Lori. Delphine La Lori. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> I wrote Delory. Whatever. Um, she says to her that she did even more despicable things than she's ever done, and that she deserves to be back in the ground. Right. She was saying, if if only if only ten of the tens of thousands of things I've read about you are true, exactly. then you deserve to be back in that box because there's something wrong with you yeah. and you're demented. Yeah. And I do have a little bit of um, And that to that becoming from that evil of a person is like, damn, girl. Yes. I do have a little I historical snippet for our news and oh. gossip section when we get I'm, there. Like we want to be there now. To just talk about <laughs> how sick of a lady she was. Shall we? I think we should because you know what? Is there anything else in this episode that anyone thought was relevant to discuss? I do not. Except for I, I... loved all the Fleetwood Mac. 
Um, yeah. Just, uh, you know, to quickly mention, uh, Nan hears Lollary's oh, yeah. thoughts so loud that she um, unties her and says, get out, because it's just so disturbing to her. She you thinks think too, too loud. <laughs> you think too loud. I think it's great. I love that she's back on American Horror Story, that actress. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I love um, her. And... I don't know. Sorry, great. I interrupted no, 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 your no, thought. Fine. But I, so there's something that I did want to touch on too was um, how Fiona, Fiona rips into Zoe when she cracks under the very mild police pressure. Oh my God. Right. And she, I wrote down some of the things she wrote that she said because they were so poignant and mean but yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She says, You are soft, emotional, and you care what people think. Even the weakest among us are better than the best of them. And the only thing you have to be afraid of is me. And I in thought, this world, she in, said, in, in this, this world. world. And I thought that was amazing, because I felt the same way. I felt like Zoe, I was just, like, she's just pathetic. She is. She's pathetic, mm -hmm. I don't like her character at all. I'm just like, I can't handle characters with no backbone and spine, you know? And I just, ugh. She's gonna grow, though, you so I believe, and see. Well, and I yeah. think that's part of her her story arc, you know, yeah. is that she's gonna get some cojones, proverbial some cojones. Some supremeness? Yes. So, yeah, I mean, whatever, some supreme cojones. A sparkly cojones. gown and a nice big wig. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, what? Wait, Diana Ross is in this? No. <laughs> yes. But Fiona really, you know, she gives it to those girls by slamming them against the walls and is well, like. Well, I mean, she's there to teach. She sure is. Yeah. And she's going to teach them a thing or two about being a witch. And she's going to teach all those, all the ladies are going to learn a thing or two from her. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm very excited to see where this season goes. Um, and I'm very happy that of where it already has gone. Yeah. And on that note, let's jump into news gossip. After Buzz TV yeah. News. So I know that last uh, last episode we were talking about the historical nature of the show and how American Horror Story is always based on some sort of American horror story. Mm -hmm. And then they put sort of, you know, the fictionalized twist on it. So uh, a lot of fans were talking about doing their research. And I know I did some research, but there's so much information, especially on Madame LaLaurie, because she was such a sicko. So I thought I would just pull out a little snippet um, because the reason that she was found out was because there was a big fire that broke out in her mansion. And when the fire marshals and the police arrived... Wait, wait, talk about how the fire broke out. When the fire okay. marshals and police <laughs> arrived, um, they found a 70-year-old woman who was chained to the stove by her ankle, a slave that admitted to starting the fire as a suicide attempt because she didn't want to be taken upstairs. And she told them that all of those slaves that get taken upstairs have never, ever come back. And that's how they ended up going into the attic and finding 70 to 100 Corpses? slaves that were still alive and showed, showed signs of being uh, tortured long term. Nice. And some were, but most of them were alive. Still, barely. Awesome. So that was all. Not that I think that that is the torturing so people is awesome. I just think that, that was a little cool. bit of information that I gathered uh, of kind of how she was ousted. But um, there's still so much more, and we'd love to hear from the fans too. If you guys get gems of information, um, there's still a lot that's unknown about her because her whereabouts when she died are thought to be Paris, but it's not confirmed. So that's what makes this makes this story even it's spookier. Thought to be Paris. Um, Interesting. Was she French? Or was she from New Orleans? She was born in New Orleans. Born in New Orleans. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, just to kind of follow up on that story, uh, I, I also read that firemen w were like running out, vomiting from the things that they saw, uh, and the the husband was questioned um, by like the chief of police, and the husband was just kind of like, uh, "This is none of your business. Like you should leave." Um, you know, families to their own affairs, and how dare you barge in here, basically, and ask why we torture people. I mean, it's, I think it's very interesting and a sign of the times that she was found out torturing these people, and she didn't get arrested, nothing happened to her, and they think that she died in Paris. Well, she just, she ran for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like a, it's a thing of like, she technically owned those people. Yes. For that time, they were her property, so she could technically do whatever and she I, wanted to them. And I went on to read that there they were rumors, but no one had seen anything. So yeah. the police would come around and give speeches about how you must treat your slaves properly. Uh -huh. But there was no actual evidence except for a young girl who apparently was brushing Madame Lollery's hair and snagged it. And so they took her to the top of the roof and pushed her off. I, I, 12-year-old girl, what? slave girl. 
Um, so this is a really nasty what? woman historically. And because of that, they had nine slaves taken away from them. Nine slaves. Uh, but a family member like bought them back, and so they ended up in the same house, and it just was what a money can buy. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Horrible. But a really more. interesting history. But this is Amer this really truly is a real American yeah. horror story. So yeah. just think about that when you're tuning in and seeing this character. Yeah. Okay, cool, Steven. Background on uh Rhiannon, the song by Yeah. Of course, Fleetwood Mac. Mm -hmm. The one and only. Uh her music is copyrighted under the name Welsh Witch Music mm -hmm. and a reference to her song Rhiannon, which she introduced as a song about Welsh witch. And apparently she bought black clothes and like really got into kind of Wicca and made people believe she was a witch for a while. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Misty wow. Day believed it. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo. Misty Day is like that is the original white witch. She's my queen. She's my queen. Does anyone else have any other news and gossip? Um, this is actually okay. news from uh, like mid July, I want to say, but I just found out about it and uh, it was kind of shocking to me, but. Um, Apparently, like Emma Roberts and Evan Peters got into like a domestic disturbance. Did you guys know about that? Uh, yeah, um, they were in Canada, and uh, apparently, yes, the police I... were called. Um, Evan was found bloodied up. Um, yeah. They yeah, arrested Emma, her on Emma the beat him up. Yeah, they arrested her on the spot, but they let her go because he had no intention of pressing charges and they are back as a couple as if nothing happened. It was like a little blurb. Well, was maybe it? they maybe he likes it rough. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. Emma Roberts has a history of dating her co-stars, and then when she's done filming, they end up broken up. But does she have a history of beating them, them before actually Movie filming? <laughs> a little, a little another tidbit for you guys. Uh, Ryan oh, Murphy man. tweeted a photo today of a bloodied up Evan mm -hmm. um, and Emma smiling. So oh. I was wondering oh, if that dear. was sort of a dig at the the domestic dispute that they had, um, or wow. it was sort of for, wait, or it's it was sort of crazy. foreshadowing something that was happening to Kyle's character in future episodes because he was covered in blood. Um, so guys, check that out on uh, Ryan Murphy's Twitter. I think it's at Mr. Ryan Murphy. Um, he also posted a really funny photo today of all the witches in a line, and he said, "On Wednesdays, we wear black." Ah, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's really funny. He's really getting into it. He is getting really into it. And now, I guess that was our news and gossip. <laughs> You jerk. <laughs> yeah, jerk. <laughs> Tell us your predictions. <laughs> I already said my only prediction, because which is always going to be our new Supreme, and that's my season prediction, because from the snippet that we saw for next week, the only thing we got was Kathy Bates is the new maid, and that's not a prediction, because they told us that. I <laughs> hope so it's not the Supreme, because I don't like her. I'm sorry. Um, um, well, my prediction is almost exactly like your prediction, except I think Nan's going to be the Supreme. Ooh. I think you're delusional. I it's it's you can't think I'm delusional for a prediction. <laughs> yes, I, I'm entitled to my opinion. Uh, um, I hope for the world that Misty Day is stays around for a little bit. Um, yeah. I think yeah, that I think there's a lot more around. to know about her, and I think that she's going to be an integral part of sort of what happens. And I think that she's such a great actress. Do you think she's going to be coming to the house? To the um, home? I mean, I think she. So she has a sense that witches are around. You know, mm -hmm. she sensed Zoe, right. so I have a feeling that she's going to find this. And what I'm hoping for is that she sort of joins their coven. Ooh. So. Are they even technically a coven yet? I don't think so. I don't. What's a, what, what did they say? Morning. What, what, what was? The I think to become a coven, you have to join. Okay. As like a group of people and like do a ritual. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how it works, right? Uh, Ori, what are your predictions? Um, I predict that um, Misty Day is going to put her muddy moves on Frank and Kyle oh. and Sexy. have some sort of like healing touch, and then he's going to see her as the healing maker, and then that's going to make Zoe confused. And I think that's the next step in that situation. Yeah. I really can't mm. make any other predictions because I can't pin anything else down. She's real lonely. She's really desperate yeah. to make something live and like stay with her. Yeah. <laughs> She's been kissing animals for so long. Yeah. That's a, exactly. a man. Oh my god. <laughs> right? And stay and with, stay with her. her. Like the alligators she come alive gone, like, and swim away and the bird flies single away. Single white female on you here. Totally. That's what I for. <laughs> she needs a man. Mm -hmm. I mean that would be cool. And he's got all we'll the best parts her. so why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean. Anyway. Whatever. <laughs> Does he have all the best parts? 
We'll see. I'd like I think he has all the right moves, you know, his head banging through <laughs> the window. Oh my God. <laughs> I, think, I think Kathy Bates is going to outlive her usefulness with Jessica Lang. And I think Jessica will actually kill her, or maybe Laveau will kill her. And then Misty Day will, use, will bring her back to life after her sweet release of death to use her for her own means. I'm so to, confused. For, she can't die. She she need can't to learn the names. She needs a, she needs a witch to kill her, so I think she's going no, to die and finally get that. She thinks that she needs a witch to kill her. And then Misty's going to bring her back to life and continue her immortal torture. I don't know about that. She's not going to die. She wow. can't die. You mean even He's entitled to his opinion. Remember? <laughs> no, I know, but it's just like one of those things. Like when you have an immortal being. Like on Vampire Diaries. Uh, this is not Vampire Diaries. I know, but it's like one of those things that people, it's a theme that people no. always use. Well, you know what the theme is here is more about <laughs> not deserve. Try, you know, dying and not disappointing the other people, and guilt by association, right. and think, having power above people underneath you. Right. So, and punishing those and letting people get what they deserve. Okay. Well, then let's put this out there also. Because it's a Ryan Murphy show, yes. which character is going to be gay? <laughs> I heard that laugh. It's Ryan Murphy. Who's gay? Well, I see. Queenie, I don't, obviously. I don't. Who? Well, Queenie. Really? Obviously. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. For I would sure. totally put think money it's Queenie? on Queenie. Yeah. I think it might be Missy. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, she totally wanted to make out with Zoe's face today. Yes, she did. Yeah. Oh. You saw that little twinkle in her eye. Yeah. Oh. oh. I didn't it's put that together, sure. but you're right. Yeah. It's not Frank and Kyle she wants, it's Zoe that yeah, she yeah, wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's in love with Zoe. She's going to use Frank and Kyle to get to Zoe. There you go. Yes. Boom. Nailed it. Finale. Boom. Until next week, everybody. Wait, where can you find everybody? I don't know. You can find me <laughs> at Miss Oriana Leo on Twitter. Uh, you can find me at Jillian Leff on Twitter. You can follow me at Cobble for Mayor, K-O-P-P-E-L-F-O-R-M-A-Y-O-R. Like and where are you? I'm at You Can Call Me Skiff. S-K-I-F-F, the letter U. Um, we'll see you guys next week. See ya. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a pre- Presentation of After Buzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of After Buzz TV or its owners or principals.